Let's begin creating a particle waterfall. We're going to create this waterfall using a curve-based emitter that will emit particles in a constant stream over time. This is our exterior hangar bay scene with the small spaceship animated entering the hangar bay. In the upper right viewport, we have the waterfall cam viewport looking at what will be a particle-based waterfall. We'll first select the NURBS curve at the top of the waterfall. We'll use that object to emit particles that will then fall straight down so that we get what looks like a large waterfall. In the waterfall cam viewport, click the waterfall emitter object. It's the curve at the top part of the waterfall. We're going to use this curve as the emitter. Make sure that the menu is set to the dynamics menu. If it's not, in the menu selection dropdown, choose dynamics. Click the particles menu. Then select the options box for the emit from object. This opens up the emitter options emit from object dialog box. Change the emitter name to waterfall. Then press enter to accept the name change. In the basic emitter attributes rollout, change the emitter type from omni to curve. This will cause the particles to be emitted along the length of the curve. Then set the rate to a value of 50, which will cause each point to emit 50 particles per second. Then make sure that the scale rate by object size option is unchecked. Leave all the other attributes at the default values. Then click the create button at the lower left side of the dialog. This adds an emitter to the curve, and now uses this curve to generate particles in the scene. To see what this currently looks like, right-click in the Waterfall Cam viewport, then click the Go To Start of Playback Range button to reset the animation back to frame 1. A quick note about previewing particle systems. When you preview a particle system, it's very important that you go to the first frame where that particle system begins emitting particles. In this case, we currently have it emitting particles beginning at frame 1. The reason this is so important is because Maya needs to know where the particle was in the previous frame in order to know where it's going to be in the next frame. If we skip frames and jump around, it becomes difficult for Maya to calculate the position of a particle in space with any degree of accuracy. Again, make sure the waterfall cam viewport is active, then click the play button on the animation controls. What we'll see does not exactly look like a waterfall. It just kind of looks like particles building up on our curve. This is exactly what's currently happening. Click stop to stop the animation. Before we begin to make changes to the particle shape and the waterfall emitter, let's get the water to at least start falling down. For this, we need to add a gravity force. From the Window menu, open the Outliner. In the Outliner, scroll down and select the object Particle 1. Then go to the Dynamic Shelf and click the Gravity button. This creates a gravity field in the scene and automatically connects the emitter to the gravity field. Now when we click play, we can see the particles fall straight down. Even though it doesn't look quite the way we want it to, we now have gravity affecting the particles being emitted from the curve. Click the stop button to stop the animation and go back to frame 1.